You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Well, you know, I've been in small business my whole life. I've sold a number of businesses. I've turned around a number of businesses as well. And the one thing I've found, and I've known a lot of other people, similar situation, you look for an exit strategy. Ideally, what I learned much later was that you should be planning your exit strategy when you're actually creating the business, building it up. I didn't know that back then, but we've got somebody who's an expert in this, uh, Violetta Trapelic. And Violetta, uh, you're, you want to discuss the five pitfalls to avoid when planning an exit. And we should go back to the beginning. First, an exit, you start a business, you should have an exit strategy. How do you plan that exit strategy? Yeah, Terry, uh, thanks for having me on this podcast. Uh, just like I said, begin with the end in mind, right? Um, so the first things I want to point out is uh, there are statistics that most business owners regret, which can I talk about why they regret. And I want to point out the pitfalls. If they can avoid, they can have a more successful business exit. So the first pitfall is that many business owners treat business ex exit as a one-time event, not a process. As you alluded earlier, you probably should start planning the exit when you are creating and growing the business. In fact, you can arguably say that if a business is not exitable, it's not even a business. So that's the first uh, pitfall. And we can go into how we, we can avoid that. And then the second pitfall is that Many business owners only consider planned or volunteer exit. They think that is equivalent to retirement or moving to the next phase of their life that is within the control, that is 100% planned. However, many exits are unplanned or involuntary. In the exit planning community, we call these the five Ds, death, disability, divorce, distress, disagreement which could happen anytime. And that also just reinforced the point that when you want to start the planning right now. And then the third uh, pitfall is business owners procrastinate. Um, planning the exit, usually they would say, well, number one, it's because they think it's a planned exit, maybe in 10 years or five years from now. And then they would say, oh, I will start planning six months before my planned exit. You know, first, I already alluded that not all exits are planned. And then second, that's not enough time, six months, right? Because how you exit can determine how you want to grow. You know, who's going to buy your business can determine how you're going to grow the business so that you become attractive to your target buyer. So we advocate that exit strategy is playing good business strategy. And then we ask the owner that they should ask uh, exit or grow every 90 days. And then the fourth pitfall that business owner thing is that Business exit is purely a business decision. Now we're talking about small to mid-sized business, right? We're not talking about Fortune 100 companies. Mm -hmm. However, in that size, inevitably, the business exit is almost always a personal decision. So it's not just a business decision. And many times the family is also involved. Number one, it involves a lot of the owner's personal emotional readiness. Uh, Later emotional you would say, component. Yeah. yeah, one of the reasons that the business owner regret after they exit the business is that they don't know who they are without the business and they don't know how to spend the time. They don't know who to spend the time because that has become the identity. So there is a big piece of personal um, emotional readiness. And then the second is the personal financial readiness, right? How much your family actually needs from the proceeds of your business so that you can stay exited not having to be forced to be unretired and go back to the business. Or if you want to venture into another business, how much risk can you and your family afford to go into the next venture and still be financially independent? So that's another why is, you know, they, they neglect to look at a personal financial readiness. So in addition to the, uh, the business, so we always tell the business owner, when you do a true good business exit planning, you should run on two tracks. 
the business exit planning and then the personal financial planning at the same time. And then you should do a three-pronged approach to assess the owner's emotional readiness, personal financial readiness, as well as the business readiness. The last pitfall, the fifth pitfall is that many business owners don't have a good professional team. When I say good professional team at a minimum that should comprise of a tax advisor, a legal advisor, and many times a wealth manager or financial advisor. That is your core team, right? Your core team should put you in the middle and agree with each other because if they don't agree with each other, that's one of the other reasons why business owners procrastinate is that they get confused. They hear one strategy from a tax advisor, another from the legal advisor, another from the financial advisor, and they don't know who to listen to. And worse yet, we contradict with each other. And that just freeze the, the business owner. In right. action, if you want to grow the business, you may even need to bring on more uh, professionals such as investment banker, a business broker, a business coach, or HR consultant, insurance agent, commercial insurance agent, process consultant. So I think that is another point is that the business owners don't have a good team because number one, they don't give themselves enough time. And number two, just lack of knowledge who should be on the team. So those are the five pitfalls that I think business owners should try to avoid. Um, There's some, uh, Carrie, should I tell you some statistics? Yeah, we love statistics on FSN. We're all about numbers here. <laughs> so according to Exaplani Institute's a State of the Owner Readiness Study, 50% of all business owners are over the age of 55. Most of them will need to exit in the next three to 10 years. 76%, three quarters, plan to use their business as their primary source of retirement, meaning that they most of the asset is tied in the business. And then out of that number, 99% of the owners agree that having a transition strategy is important. However, only 20% have a plan in place. And even worse, only 6% have a written, we call life after plan which means that who are you become, who are you after your ex, only 6% of that. So you can see how ill-prepared the business sure. owners are. And that's why we want to advocate and educate business owners to start early and you know to take um, earlier and more steps and build it into their growth and creation strategy. All right. So successful uh, business exit is no accident. Uh, I think uh, one thing you pointed out is a lot of people wait for their health to catch up with you and uh, 55 and over uh, to have no exit strategy, big mistake. Uh, many of you out in these small businesses, uh, there's no one else that can run it. The family can't or they don't want to. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, it's up to you to take care of this or uh, your heirs might very well suffer the consequences talk about exit strategies and getting companies back. There's a guy here in Florida I know who sold a number of businesses and many times he's wound up taking them back, which he's still in his prime, uh, well, maybe not prime, but he's still able to uh, build these companies back up and sell them again. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not something though that you really wanna do. You, generally when you're a business, when you sell it, out of sight, out of mind, you don't even yep. want to know about it. Like six months before, you'll reach a point where you just want no part of it and you just move on. Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Osino Resources is a Ross Beattie backed gold exploration company in mining friendly Namibia. Osino's district scale land package is situated near two producing gold mines, one of which Osino's management team previously developed and sold to B2 Gold. Osino's founders and management are experienced mining professionals who have already successfully developed and sold two companies in the past seven years. Osino has an excellent shareholder base with Ross Beattie owning 20%, Insiders 5%, and Resource Capital Funds 8%. This is an exploration company with drills turning that you'll definitely want to pay attention to. Osino trades in New York under the ticker O-S-I-I-F and in Toronto under the ticker O-S-I. To learn more, go to OsinoResources.com. That's OsinoResources.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever.
yeah, you you truly have exited the business. At worst, is sometimes we hear business owners. I mean, literally, we have here business owners drop dead. You know, how many business owners will overwork themselves or they're unhappy and that they drop dead um, on on the job or they got uh, diagnosed of some illness that that they're forced to have to exit the business right. at that point they don't have the time they don't have the professional team the business was is not ready to sell and a lot of times they only get sold at all sometimes uh, there's statistics that uh, most businesses are not sold you know even they can be sold it will be sold for a fraction so there are another set of statistics uh value builder and other uh exoplanet organization they their research shows that there are four main reasons for the regret because uh the Exoplanet Institute, in that same study, the state of owners rating a study shows that 75% of owners regret their exit one year after leaving. Really? And oh. only 5% were happy with the net proceeds from the selling. So the other set of uh, research shows that there are four reasons, four main reasons of why business owners regret. So number one is that the owner does not have a clear future vision after exiting the business. It's probably because of lack of planning or they're just not used to looking at the personal life, you know, go deeper, do some soul searching within themselves and ask, who are you? Why are you having the business? Who are you? Or who will you become without the business, right? So that actually takes some life coaching or life visioning skills or financial life planning um, to, to, to reach that. So that's the number one reason uh, business owners regret. Second reason is that the business owners wasn't aware of all the options. So they didn't put all the exit options on the table and look at them and then evaluate them before they pick one. You know, usually we hear business owners just pick the, the path that would be resistant, whatever. You know, maybe I'll sell it to my employees or maybe there is a competitor down the street that I'll sell it to. They never have taken a planning process or more scientific process that well, let's look at all the options. A lot of times it's probably because of lack of education. They may not be aware of other options. So that's why the professional team is important to bring the other option. You know, maybe there's a private equity team or a, a private equity firm you can sell to, or maybe there's a consolidated industry is consolidated, or maybe strategic buyers who will pay more. So that's the second reason they regret is they never looked at all the options. And then after they have existed, then they realize that they missed some of the other options that probably they could have sold the business for more. Um, and third is that the owner is still attached to the mm -hmm. business. Uh, the, the two kind of attachments, one is emotional attachment, right? Because of that, the business has become the identity of the business. That's when you show up. Many business owners or are the first one to show up, last one to leave, right? Work really hard in the business. Um, and then, you know, their emotion, that's their, 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 their life, right? Their, their life is all working. So there's an emotional attachment. And second is, I would say, uh, physical or, or financial attachment or structural attachment is that they have not built the business to be able to be run without them. So the business is reliant on them. The minute they exited the business, the business could collapse because they have not built the infrastructure to run the business. So, Carrie, that it goes back to your point is that sometimes they might be brought back to run the business because mm -hmm. no one else could run you know, the business, right? So that's why it's important to treat a business like a business and build the infrastructure. Um, we call the four different, uh, we call the four Cs, the four capital, the structure capital, which means that you have the uh, structure to run the business. And then the second is social capital is the brand name that is not you. You know, your name is not on the, the door. And then customer uh, capital is that your business is not overly reliant on major uh, customers or clientele. Particularly that clientele is not just doing business because of the relationship of the owner. Because they only do the business because based on the relationship of the owner. Once the, the, sure. the owner exited, then it's gone, right? And then the other is human capital. They used to build a, a leadership team so that they can run the business without the owner. The fourth uh, reason for regret is that the business owner is unhappy with how their employees are treated after their exit. I think this goes back to Carrie that 
because they really didn't lay out all the exit options and evaluated all the options and have a more deliberate effort of negotiating. Um, so therefore, when the buyer buys out and then they want to treat the business, the, the employees hard, they they want to, or maybe the business owner has not built uh, some kind of financial incentive uh, mm-hmm. to make sure that the employees are taken care of, right? So again, that goes back to why uh, a holistic approach and an early approach of business exit planning is very important. Right. All right. Well, fascinating subject here, one that's near and dear to my heart since I've sold a couple of businesses in the past and the tendency is to try to never look back. But the reality is that it doesn't work that way. Uh, Violetta, where do we find you? How do we connect with you on the web if we want to find out more? Yeah, so I do own a franchise, a financial planning business, a franchise with Ameriprise. Our company is called Indigo Flow financial group if you just mm-hmm. type indigo flow which is one word indigo the color plus flow f l o w financial group you'll find us on uh, the uh, on the website and also linkedin i have a linkedin uh, page um if my name is kind of hard to just spell violetta triple up but i am the only violetta triple up probably <laughs> sure in the financial that. world mm-hmm. uh you type that in and then you know you can opt in our newsletter uh, we do send out a newsletter on the financial matters and we do post uh, webinars. Uh, so if you can find me on LinkedIn uh, or my website, we can find the email, you can opt in and then we can you know, provide even more education to the business. That's excellent. All right. We really appreciate you coming on. It's been a pleasure. Got a question for you, Violetta? Shoot us an email at kl at kerrylutz.com. Don't forget when you're at the site, sign up for the free weekly newsletter. We got one going out soon. Violetta, thanks so much for coming on. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.